Hey guys, I'm Danny of Friendly Neighborhood Colorist and in my previous video, I did a muted go look and in this one, I'm going to try to do a different type of go look which is a vibrant one and I'm going to use references from Top Gun Merrick because I feel that they have very nice vibrant go tones going on over there. So let's get into the video. So the clip that we're going to be using today is from Blackmagic Design's own website so I'll leave a link to download this clip in the description or the comments. And the other thing that I have is references from Top Gun Maverick. So in my gallery, in the stills album, I have our muted go look from last video and also this new Top Gun Maverick stills that I captured from the movie. So there are two different stills here. One is shot from an angle where the sun is not directly shooting into the sun and the other one is shooting into the sun. So for our footage today, we have to choose the right reference to create over. So between these two, the one that is closest to the clip that we have is shooting from an angle from the sun, not directly like this, creating a silhouette. So if we use this reference, the silhouette that we are going to create is not going to be very believable and we are going to be washing out everything. So I think it's more logical that we should be using this as a reference for our grid. And with that in mind, we can start to build out our node tree. The node tree that I'm going to be using is my Visionary Power Grids version 5. And you can have a look at them over here. So I break down the whole node tree in case you want to have a proper workflow for all your grades. So I have the advanced beginner and pro. I'm going to be using the pro for this video. I'm going to start grading by doing my color management first. So in my IDT, which is my input device transform, let's see what's inside. I have my input color space and input gamma. So I know that this clip is from Blackmagic Design, but I'm not sure which color space because Blackmagic Design has plenty of color spaces and also plenty of gamma to choose from. So how do I determine what is the correct color space and gamma? I can jump back into my edit page, into my metadata and go into this drop down menu, all groups. So this will show you all the metadata that is tagged in this clip, which is like the night and day, this one, it says interior, but this is obviously exterior. It has a clip number and it has bit depth information, which is 16 bit. It's a lot of bit depth for us to be working with. And let's see camera type, Ursa Mini Pro 12K. And we have Blackmagic Design. Let's see if we can find any information about. So one thing you can find is their LUT use. And the LUT use here, you can see that is Gen 5, Ursa Mini Pro Gen 5 and lens type, those are not important. So they don't really have the color space, gamma node, black magic design film, and color space, black magic design. So we know it's film and gen five slot being used. So if I jump back into my color page, I can go into my IDT, input color space. I'm gonna go with the most common one, which is white gamut gen four slash five and input gamma, I'm going to go search for Film Gen 5, which is the most common one being used. You can also test out other gamuts in case they give a better result. Let's say instead of film, let's choose video. This is obviously the wrong one. And if I choose extended video, it's also the wrong one. So I'm going to go with Film Gen 5. Let's see if we can choose any other color space. Video Gen 5? No, it's not giving me the right results as well. So I think the best one that we can go is White Gamut Gen 4 slash 5 and also Film Gen 5. So this Pro Note 3 is using the DaVinci White Gamut working color space. So we are going from the color space of the camera into our working color space, which is DaVinci White Gamut and jumping into our 23rd note, which is the ODT. We are going from DaVinci White Gamut into Rec 709, our display color space. And that's it for color management. So it's simple. Now we have a pretty good start that we can start building our look on. So let's pull up our reference. I'm going to go into my gallery and do an image wipe so that we can see what we are working with. So this is where we want to go and this is where we are now. Let's try to push that. So before we start pushing the yellow in, there is one thing that is very crucial if you want to achieve a look like this, which is you have to push enough saturation. 
in your primaries so that we have more colors, more space to work with. So let me show you an example. If in my look node, I'm going to push my yellow in the gain. I use the gain as an atmosphere. So if you if it's a sunset, you can push the gain towards yellow or towards orange. If it's a cloudy day, you can push the gain towards the more bluer side or greener side. So gain acts as an atmosphere. So I'm going to use the gain and push it towards yellow. So you see, if I just push it like this, everything skews to the yellow which is not what I want. There is still some skin tone that you can see over here and we don't want to lose that. So if I just push it like this, everything gets lost. So I'm going to reset this. Going back into my primaries, I'm going to push some saturation. So by default, there is a minus in saturation from 50 to 40 because I'm using a bit of subtractive saturation. So I'm going to try to use my color boost to boost everything up first. Something like this, maybe 10 would do. And in my saturation, let's reset that to 50 so that we have a bit of blues and a bit of skin tone to be working with instead of pushing everything all at once, right? So now it's looking a little bit more balanced. And if I push my look in with the atmosphere, it will still maintain some of that skin tones. Pushing it to its yellow. Let's go a bit more yellow. So I'm pretty happy with where my yellow is sitting at right now. But you can pause the video now and think about what is different between these two scenes. What do you think is the most different? Yes, so the brightness of these two scenes are slightly different. We have to brighten up our grade so that it matches with more or less like the sky over here because it's a lot brighter if you look at the waveform. So I'm going to go back into my primaries and increase the gain to brighten it up. And then I'm going to decrease my gamma to create more contrast. So if I flip it, I can still increase it a little bit more. Let's put it side by side using our still images. So this is a previous grade that I did, which is much brighter, yeah. So I'm going to go and brighten this up in my primaries. Let's go up, up, and then reduce it back down using the gamma. Like this. Try to control it, try to shape that light. And we don't really have enough uh, texture on this side of the image. So what I'm going to do is a little bit more micro, which is using our secondaries. So I'm going to try to draw a left window. If I turn this on, I have a preset, which is a gradient from the left. Let's pull this in, right? But I don't want the brightening effect. So I'm going to reset it and darken it. Yes. So let's create more contrast in this side of the image. So if I turn it on and off, you see, there's an increase in that contrast so that it better matches the clip that we have here. I think we can also push the yellow in the look to be a bit more yellowish instead of this orangey tone. I still feel that it's a little bit orange. So I'm going to push towards that direction so that it gets that yellow boost. So I think we can increase the contrast a little bit more to match the reference. Let's boost up the gain and then reduce down the gamma just slightly so that we can kind of match the skies over here. Let's reduce down the lift slightly as well, right somewhere here. So there's a very big difference in our reference and the clip that we have. And that is the subject here, which is occupying a large area of the frame. Instead, we have a very blank sky, which is very bright. So we have to take that into consideration when we are grading. As long as the sky and the subject is more or less where we want it to be, then that's the best that we can do with the frame that we have. So let's check for the blacks 
I want to see whether the blacks are true black or is there some color to it. So I'm going to switch to my qualifier and point it to it somewhere that is black. Let's see, maybe his shoes over here. So I'm looking at my waveform over here. You will see that there is a slight green tint and also slight red tint. So it's more or less greenish, yellowish in the blacks. It's not true black. So we don't really have to correct for that as well. If I point it to my shirt over here, we can see that the shadow is slightly warm. So it's not an issue to match this too. With that done, I think what we can add to this is also a little bit of bleach bypass to get more of that solid texture like what we have in the sky over here. So I have the bleach bypass already built out in my look development notes over here. So I can just turn this on, right? And then let's see the key output gain of this is set at 20%. So I'm going to turn this on and off. Yeah, I think it helps a bit but we have to readjust the other elements as well. Like the left window here is getting a little bit too bright. So let's reduce that. Now it's looking better. So it's a push and pull. You don't, you can't expect to just drop something like a LUT and then expect it to do all the work. So now that we have that done, I want to push more yellow into the sky. Like this, pushing it, pushing it, right. And our subject, let's check. There is still a tiny bit of color in their skin. So that is good for us. And I think we are pretty much done here. Maybe a slight lift in the gain would do. All right. And I think these two clips matches up pretty nicely. So that is very quick. Let's maybe just add a vignette, turn that on. And we have match our clip. So a little bit higher, I guess, reddish, right? So by putting it side by side like this, I get a very clear picture of what I'm trying to match. So this is the golden grade in Top Gun. So I hope you enjoyed this very quick tutorial on the Vibrant Go look because in my last video, I actually covered a lot of elements on how to create a Go look. So you can go check that out if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.